Hello everyone, it's Sal here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be talking about my top 10 favourite fragrances out of my whole collection um, of the moment. But before we get started with the perfumes, if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a wee thumbs up and click the subscribe button below for weekly perfume videos. And with that being said, it's time to sit back, relax, grab yourself a drink and a snack and uh, let's get started with today's video. So I think today I'm just going to start off with my scent of the day actually and that is Lanry Tresor Eau de Parfum from Longcom and I'm quite glad actually that this fragrance has managed to make its way onto a favourites video because for the longest time it just wasn't actually getting worn just because it's quite dressy and it's very intoxicating and heavy and it's the sort of fragrance that I used to sort of reserve only for like evenings out for drinks or um you know, dressier sort of situations, you know, but just with the weather cooling down, I thought that I would um, try and just wear this one a little bit more often, and that's exactly what I've been doing. I've really been enjoying this one. So this is just the most divine, sweet and smoky, fruity, gourmand kind of scent, really. It's very intoxicating, it's very complex as well. Um, there's quite a lot going on in here, you know, there's many, many notes in the scent profile, but overall it kind of gives this um, very alluring, dark, sweet, smoky, certainly very mysterious. And I just really love this one. The lasting power is incredible, the projection is incredible, so it's a really nice strong like fragrance, particularly for those colder days. And I actually find this one to be quite um, like cosy just because of how thick it is. You know, it's a very, very like heavy, heady kind of scent. And on a cold day like today, um, I've, I've just been really enjoying it. It's quite a powerful scent and it's kind of been giving me like energy for today's filming day, which has been kind of nice as well. So that is Lanry Tresor Eau de Parfum, a fragrance that, um, you know, for the longest time wasn't getting much love, but I've certainly been enjoying it very much these days. Next up today, I want to mention Narciso Rodriguez for her Eau de Toilette. Um, this fragrance is fantastic. The only slight annoying thing about this bottle is the fact that the lid is really difficult to get on and off. I don't actually put the lid on properly anymore. I just kind of sit it on there because if I actually click it on, it's just, <laughs> it's kind of a workout trying to get the lid off and stuff. But this is a really good one, you guys. I would say if you're a fan of um, very, very musky, ambery, powdery, slightly floral kind of fragrances that are quite unique and kind of alluring and interesting, you know, then I would give this one a try. This is, is it my favourite from the Narciso, like, line? It's definitely up there. I mean, you know, at this point in time, I only actually own three Narciso fragrances in my collection. I own this one, I own the White Cube and I own Poudre and I would say I actually love them all kind of equally. It would be so hard to choose a favourite anyway but um, yeah certainly if you enjoy your very very like musky, uh, powdery, slightly dewy, very like natural sort of glowing fragrances that give this aura of like feminine charm, that kind of thing. I would definitely give this one a try. It's just really unusual. Can't say I've ever smelled anything like this. You know, it's quite unique to me. I believe the florals that you have in here are uh, osmanthus and possibly orange blossom like in the opening and then so I would really recommend this fragrance. It's a beautiful musky, quite a sweet scent as well. Very powdery as well, very, very feminine to me, very like magnetic, alluring, just stunning, you guys. I've really been enjoying this one. Another fragrance that I've been enjoying a fair bit recently is this beauty here, Lintrudy Intense from Givenchy. Now, this is without a doubt my favourite from the Lintrudy line, I'm pretty sure anyway. I need to go back to Rouge, I need to give that one another try and decide if I'm going to actually purchase it because I did quite enjoy that one. Um, but as it stands like right now, I would say this one, this one here is my favourite. It's just a really nice, unusual, addicting fragrance that literally smells like um, a black sesame mochi dessert. It has that kind of chewy texture that you get from a mochi um, sort of sweet and it has that same exact like smell that you would get from that dessert. 
and you know it's just such a pleasant experience from that point of view it's quite gourmand to me for that reason and overall this is just the most beautiful sweet fragrance but not too sweet at all the sweetness in here is beautifully balanced with the uh, black pepper notes with the sesame uh, the tube rose in here is very creamy and like smooth and very beautiful Again, there's that thick, chewy texture in here that I've never really experienced from any other fragrance, which makes this one quite unique to me. I've really been enjoying it, and I think certainly for like winter, cold weather, this fragrance is just absolutely divine. So that is Linterdy Intense from Givenchy. Next we have my beloved Mon Guerlain Intense from Guerlain. Now, I honestly grow to love this fragrance more and more as time goes on. Very, very smooth, subtle lavender notes in here. So if you're looking for a lavender kind of fragrance, um, well, not, not purely a lavender fragrance, but if you're looking for a fragrance with a subtle hint of lavender in it, um, but it's not going to be too much, I would give this one a try because actually out of um, all of the sort of lavender fragrances that I've tried to date, I would say this one is the most, um, this is the smoothest one, you know, this one is uh, the best blended and it's just very seamlessly in there. You know, the lavender in the original Mongerlan and in the likes of Libra and Libra Intense, it's very, very like strong, very dominating, quite noticeable, you know, but in here, it's just so like smooth, it's very well blended, very nuanced. And there's kind of a weight to this fragrance from the base notes, from the woodiness, and I believe there's also licorice in here as well as your addition of white musk to add a really nice sensual nature to the fragrance. And overall, I just think this fragrance is an absolute masterpiece. It's definitely my favorite from the Mongerland line. Um, for a while, it was very close between the original Mongerland and the Intense, but now it's very clearly the Intense that's my favorite. You know, it's, I've just grown to love it more and more. It's one of those fragrances that keeps growing on me. And, um, and it would definitely be a repurchase when I run out of this one, that's for sure. So that is Mongerlan Intense from Guerlain. The next fragrance I have today that I've been absolutely loving is Amber 114 from Histoire de Parfum. Now, this was such a successful blind buy, you guys, you have no idea. And I'm actually kind of wishing that I'd picked up the larger bottle. I mean... In reality, it was the most sensible thing to go for like the smaller size, just because it was a blind buy. But knowing what I know now about the fragrance, I probably would have sized up. It's just the most stunning fragrance. It reminds me quite a lot of uh, Grand Soir from Maison Francis Kirkjan. So if you know that you already adore that fragrance and you wanted something similar, but not as pricey, I would actually check this one out from Histoire de Parfum. Because in my opinion, <laughs> this one's actually better this one is more complex. It's quite spicy upon the first application, but it definitely softens up throughout the dry down. Once it warms up on your skin, it really smoothens out and um, you will just pick up on all of these beautiful little nuances in the scent profile because it is quite complex. I believe it has uh, some rose in there as well and maybe geranium. There, there's some sort of like floral in here but primarily to me, it's a very opulent, rich, um, smooth, uh, very warming, comforting, amber, vanilla, woody, slightly spicy kind of fragrance. Just with so many different facets to it, you guys, it really is a truly beautiful fragrance, especially for the autumn and winter. I mean, this would be up there with one of the, the most <laughs> beautiful, gorgeous cold weather scents ever. It really is stunning. Um, I don't know if you can see the dent in here. There is actually a wee dent. Um, the sprayer itself is quite small, so I don't think it, like it doesn't spray out a whole lot when you actually spray it. It's a whole mood, you know, it creates this whole atmosphere, just this opulent, rich, decadent kind of mood, and I just absolutely love it quite luxurious as well. I can imagine somebody very, very like respectable, very well dressed, fiercely dressed, that kind of thing. I can imagine somebody like that smelling like this. It's just one of those incredible fragrances. It smells very like unique. 
There's definitely something more to this than uh, Grand Soir. I actually really prefer this one. So that is Amber 114 from Histoire de Parfum. Possibly one of the most perfect cold weather fragrances ever and it's absolutely stunning. So I absolutely love all of these but I am saving my absolute favourites to the end so stay tuned for those. But anyway, next up today we have YSL Libre Intense, a really stunning um, kind of sweet, aromatic, lavender kind of fragrance. Very like refreshing and invigorating I find. I mean this is supposed to be a warmer, more sensual mood than the original Libra, which I think it is, but to me this is giving me like uh, invigorating, refreshing vibes as opposed to like a deep, rich evening kind of mood. You know, um, let me know if you get that from this fragrance, let me know what you think of it in general. I really, really enjoy this one, particularly for mornings. So there's something very like clean and refreshing about this, but it still has a nice depth to it. It's not, it's not really what I would consider to be um, a soapy clean scent at all, but it definitely has like a refreshing quality just from that very prominent lavender note in here. But like I say, it is still very rich at the same time because it is the intense version. It has um, more decadent notes in there, like the orchid. I believe it has ambergris as well. So it's a very well-rounded, um, interesting fragrance with depth to it but the mood that it gives me is more of a invigorating motivating uplifting uh, vibrant kind of mood which lends itself very nicely to the mornings I have found it really is a fantastic fragrance kind of wishing um, that I'd got a bigger bottle sort of because I feel like I'm going through this one kind of quickly it's really beautiful as far as lavender scents are concerned. So that is YSL Libra Intense. Next up today, of course, we have the beautiful Black Opium from YSL. This is a fragrance that I've been wearing a fair bit recently, um, of course, as it's one of my favourites. You know, I have gone through this one a fair bit. Um, I am running quite low on this one, but it's fine because I do have a backup bottle. Um, oh, just so sweet, so Moorish so addicting, so comforting, super feminine as well to me. I love the coffee and vanilla in here. I also really enjoy the sort of heavier notes in the base like the licorice, the patchouli. I believe there is a pink pepper and pear in the opening as well as some orange blossom and jasmine in the heart notes. Oh I just love this fragrance so much. I just adore it. So that is YSL's Black Opium, a fragrance that probably didn't come as much of a surprise, you guys. And now we are making our way up to the very top of my list. These are fragrances that I have been absolutely obsessed with recently, like seriously, and I'm kind of gonna mention them all together to start with and then I'll go into each one individually. So it's actually all of my aliens, every single one of them. I have not been able to get enough of these, really. In the last week, about 80% of the time, I've just been wearing these more than anything else. And I would say I've truly, you know, discovered the magic of the alien line now. I always liked them and I could always appreciate that they were fantastic fragrances, but I would like spray them very sparingly, you know, like I would, Mm, I'd, I'd feel very cautious about even wearing the Eau de Parfum and with these ones I would wear them like every now and again but not like super super often but I have to say over the last week I have just been absolutely obsessed with actually all of these um, in particular I would say the Alien Fusion with the Eau de Parfum as in actually wearing them together has been absolutely phenomenal. If you are kind of in the alien mood but you want to add a bit of sweetness you could spray some of the alien fusion over top and it adds this really gorgeous dimension you know to the alien like profile it adds that very addicting balsamic sweetness and of course if you just wanted a super dose of that kind of alien sweetness on its own you could wear alien fusion like on its own. Um, but like I say, I've been wearing these mostly actually together and I've not been able to get enough of it. Yesterday what I wore was, I think I wore these two together just to give it a try and they smelled really lovely. So I sprayed mostly Alien Fusion on my pulse points and then I kind of sprayed a, a thin veil of the Alien Eau de Toilette just like 
all over my clothes and things like that just to amp up that alien dna scent and i've i've been loving them you guys i've been loving all three of these i've been wearing them so much they're so fantastic let me know in the comments what you think of the alien line which one is your favorite and actually let me know if any of you have tried the alien musk I can't remember what it's called but the the musky one or the oud one of alien let me know if you've tried either of those i i don't think you can get the oud one anymore i think it's been discontinued or something but i've been really fascinated by the idea of them and just let me know in the comments what they're like i'm super interested to hear from you guys if you've tried them so that's what we have for now i will say there are actually two more fragrances on my table here that have also been my favourites, but I'm not going to mention them today because they're actually brand new to my collection. Well, one of them I think you've seen before, um, it's still quite new, but the, the other one is like totally new to my collection and I'm going to save them, I think, for an upcoming haul video that I will be doing. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, despite the kind of darkness. Um, it just, it feels very dark in here. I think it's just because of the weather, unfortunately. But um, I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought in the comments. It's always so nice to hear from you. Take care and I can't wait to see you very soon on my next video. Bye.